What's up, Christoph? Thank you so much for being on here, dude. It's been, uh, like we said earlier, it's been uh, several months in the making of trying to get our schedules to align, but I'm excited to chat with you. I was um, told by our mutual friend, Adam Topol, that you're a great guy to talk to, and uh, I'm, excited to, I'm excited to find out why he loves you so much. But looking at your stuff online and doing a little research before our talk, you're, you're involved in so many things. I'm not even sure where we should begin, but uh, thanks for being on here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's so it's so cool that Adam put us in touch, and uh, yeah, he's such a sweetheart. And absolutely, uh, yeah, I met him when I was like buying a surfboard that he had that I thought was really cool, and we just ended up chatting and chatting. So, it was, uh, yeah, such a lovely. And then we have all these mutual friends, and and uh, and uh, yeah, so so it was amazing, like a Facebook Marketplace meetup type thing. I think it was Craigslist actually. Like Craigslist but, back um, in the day. Okay. Yeah. For people we listening, drummer, uh, drummer. For we people, have other drummer friends in common yeah. and stuff. For people listening, tell everyone who Adam is in case they missed my episode with him. Oh, Adam is, the, uh, he's this absolutely incredible drummer and sweetheart of a person. And I, I believe his main gig is with Jack Johnson. Yeah. And he's, right. Yeah. I, I think he, I play, think he plays with other folks as well too. And he I know does. he does a lot of like, yeah. um, studio recording work. Absolutely. So. You know, I'm not really sure which of your passions you're most passionate about talking about first, but uh, let me ask you this question. When, when you meet people on Craigslist or where, wherever else it might be, and they say, <laughs> Christoph, what do you do for a living? How do you typically answer that? Oh, well, for a living, I mean, really, there's only, at this point, there's really only one thing that pays me m money, I guess, and that's acting. Yeah. Um, so for a living, that's it's it's acting. Um, and And that wasn't really a passion you know, 20 years ago, I, I didn't grow up in theater school or wanting to be in movies or, or anything like that. I grew up really loving music and, um, wanting to play in bands and play in dirty, dirty clubs all around Detroit and this, uh, this lovely nation of ours. Um, but, um, but yeah, a acting at this point is, is where I make, you know, the majority of my living and, and how I want to do that for the for the, I, I guess I should say entertainment because I really want to move into more of a writing, um, you know, a, a, other roles in addition to just acting. Mm -hmm. But so, in addition to that, though, and I'm not sure which of these, yeah, fall on the chart of passion slash interest slash paying the bills. But um, stuntman, actor, host, you have your podcast, um, advocate, surfer, drummer, journalist. Yeah, that's a lot of um, surfer. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you got a lot of stuff going. On. I saw your surf clips. You rip, which is awesome. And uh, awesome. I, I was trying to dig up some some drumming clips. I couldn't find too much. I found a little bit, but um, yeah, I think there's a drumming reel because um, well, I'll just give you the I'll I'll give you the, like the 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 quick tour. So I um, I graduated from college in Michigan in 2001, and when I, uh, I always say I got out of college. I don't know why I, I graduated from, it's like prison, you know, but, yeah. um, but yeah, when I graduated from college, I, um, couldn't get a job in, I, I wanted to work in audio production and I couldn't get a job in audio production. And, um, I kind of saw it as an opportunity and I loved music so much. And I basically posed the question to myself, would I be upset if I turned 40 and I didn't, pursue a, a, a life and a career in in music and the answer to that was yes and so i decided to practice drums as much as i possibly could i you know when i left college i lived in my mom's basement um because i couldn't get a job and i just started practicing drums uh, you know every single day all day and and i i i loved it so much and i ended up in in a rock and roll band that took me around the US for 6 years and we also toured Europe and I loved that so much it's it was it was incredible I also worked at uh two community television stations at the same time in Michigan so touring in a rock band and working at two different television stations um shooting writing editing directing producing basically doing everything you can um at these at these places um and I didn't make any money in the rock and roll band, so I quit the rock and roll band and I moved to Los Angeles with the intent of getting back into bands and getting out on the road and making a name for myself in a bigger pool. 
um, out in Los Angeles. And uh, that didn't really happen for me. I did get some really great gigs. I ended up playing on the Ellen DeGeneres show shortly after I moved back to, uh, or shortly after moving to Los Angeles. But then I started to, because of my size, I'm a little person, I'm four foot four inches tall. I started to get called for acting jobs and I got an acting agent right away. And I started, uh, I did my, my still one of my biggest um, jobs as an actor was um, Universal Pictures called me shortly after I moved to LA and they wanted me to be the uh, stand in for a CGI alien character called Paul. And um, it was so much fun. It was an incredible summer. I still have, you know, best friends, amazing relationships that I made from that summer. I was able to make money and come back to LA and not be starving and broke. Um, and it just kind of changed my whole trajectory. And so after that, I I was interested in pursuing acting, still did some music as well, but I, I really wanted to do acting. And um, it took me about 10 years to realize that as little people in the industry, we are not seen as people we're seen as folks that can animate foam and we should be elves and demons and leprechauns and all these you know single note caricature creatures and 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 stuff without a backstory and that's not my life at all i love surfing i love music i love you know my friends i love nature i love traveling and it took me a long time to realize like these things are not going to to happen for me in in acting and so i started a podcast because I really wanted to share the stories and the lives of people who look like me um, because I didn't see that media out there at all. I didn't see little people shown in a, in a actual light. I mean, there are documentary films, but I kind of hate documentaries about little people, even though there is one about me. Um, I think that that only goes so far and it's, it kind of feels a little pitiful at times. Um, to watch i just because like it's <clears throat> i feel like it's pulling on heartstrings instead of actually humanizing an individual and that's not what i want for us that's not what my friends want and 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 folks that live with this um with this experience and so um yeah i had a really great time starting my podcast and i did it for a couple of years and i'm sad to say that the podcast has been on hiatus because i don't know if you know jay but podcasts are difficult man like they it's are. hard to do <laughs> <laughs> they're so time consuming and you know th you want to get it right and and i was a one-man band and it, it was just really tough so the podcast has been on the shelf a little bit but i'm moving more into trying to create and write characters that um authentically represent little people in more of a theatrical way which i think is the better way to have us represented and and yeah, most recently I um, am super, super lucky because I'm starring in a film called Sasquatch Sunset with Jesse Eisenberg and Riley Keough. And I've been doing the um, the press tour, the premiere tours. We went to Sundance. The film went to Berlin it, uh, and I just got back from South by Southwest yesterday. So um, and it's uh, it'll be in theaters in April. So please go uh, see Sasquatch Sunset in, in your your theaters. So. Um, and you're playing Sasquatch, yeah. I take it. Yeah, there are no humans in the film. Uh, there's no, there are no humans. There's no dialogue. There's no language. Um, it's 90 minutes of uh, grunting and howling and um, all the other things that you might imagine or you never imagined Sasquatch to be okay. doing. The answers are in the film. You said a lot that I want to dive into, and I'm not sure. Which I'm sorry bit? if I commandeer. No, it's no, <laughs> please. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling right now because I am trying to, on the one hand, we're, we're doing this podcast via Zoom and in looking at you, you have a whole story, talents, skill set, experience that has nothing to do anything with you being a little person and looking at mm -hmm. you, I would never, I, I wouldn't know how tall you are. You wouldn't know how tall I am. So it's like, who the hell cares? I, and so the one hand, right. I want to take this in a direction of like, I don't give a crap how tall you are. On the other right. hand, you, it seems to be a, a large part of your identity, like in looking at how you brand yourself and looking at the work you've done and looking at your website, it's front and center. This is who you are. And I think it speaks to, it speaks bigger than just your tribe. I don't know what the proper verbiage is. It, it seems people. people. Okay. So it seems, 
it seems to speak larger than just your people because I think a lot of people struggle with or have challenges with growing up with different parts of their immutable characteristics. Too tall, mm-hmm. too short, too fat, too whatever, blah, 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 blah. Everyone has a version of that, and it's so relative. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering how that, how that mindset shift has changed over the years, if there was a version of acceptance for you, if there was how, – how that, how that works for you. Because I know that for myself, I've struggled with a lot of insecurities and a lot of moments – um, where as a young, younger person, I spent thinking, I wish this was different about me, or I wish that was different, or if I only ch- could change this or that, then people would like me more and I'd have more dates and blah, 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 blah. We all have a version of that, except for the very select few perfectly amazing people that are just pop out of the womb. Perfect. Talk about right. that a little bit, I guess, first. Yeah. It, uh, that's, that's really been my experience. Honestly, it's, it's, it's a lot of self-denial and, um, self-esteem struggles, you know, uh, seeing, I, I, I've always believed in myself. I've always felt like, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. And I did that from a young age. I would go riding my bike on trails by myself and in my neighborhood and out in the woods and, you know, just get totally messy and dirty and play all the sports I possibly could. And, um, also as a child, I had two reconstructive leg surgeries and a spinal fusion. So my Mm. spine has been fused from T1 to L4 for longer than it hasn't in my life. And, you know, those are, those moments are definitely, I don't know if they're moments of reckoning or like, I don't want to, it's when you're, for me, it wasn't that dramatic. It was, I I knew I was going to have to, I wore a back brace for a while and I knew I was going to, I just knew I was going to have to have surgery and I'm so thankful, you know, it's a roll of the dice, right? With back surgery because I came out of the surgery and I'm this physical and I'm doing all these things and I'm still 44 years old and holy cow, I don't have pain. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Um, so because I went through all of those things, all those surgeries and all those doctor's appointments and stuff, I, I really had self-confidence in in the things that I in my ability and the things that I could do and I love that about myself but then when it came to social situations I'm super social I love to hang out with pe- I love people I love being around people I love hanging I'm I I I made it like my new year's resolution to be to not be the one at the only one at the at the end of the party every every time there's a party because <laughs> I just I just hang so long and I, sometimes I just want to go home, man. You know, like Uh, that's, uh, that's just how I am. And I used to be that guy. How did you break it? Teach me. me What (laughs) what did you Uh, do? I don't want to, I don't want to sidetrack your story, but to answer your question uh, for me, I spent, um, the first, let's say 19 years of 18 years of my life, completely socially awkward, very insecure, chronic anxiety, um, just felt like the outcast in every situation. And then I went to college and sort of escaped some, let's just say, challenging experiences at home. And I sort of had a chance to reinvent myself and um, oh, wow. found a new tribe, found out that alcohol and, and weed are actually interesting substances for how you act in public. And I, yep. I sort of uh, experimented with what it could be like being a different version of myself. And then I by the time I graduated or left college, as you said, um, I got out, got, got out, got out of college. There you go. <laughs> by the time I escaped college, um, I could have stayed there forever, to be honest. But by the time I, I got out of college, I, I was kind of like the mayor of my campus, like shaking everyone's hand, like the last to leave. Oh. Like when anyone left a party, I was like, why are you leaving? You have to yeah. stay. And I'd be the guy sleeping on the couch. And then uh, as I got older, especially since I got married and have, well, since I had kids, that was probably the biggest change where I was just like, you know what? I actually am content in just being myself, just being clear headed and not living that other version of who I am for the sake of being more liked. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's my quick story. I, 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 I agree with that. I, th- I think that that has been the thing for me in the, in the past. It's, it's kind of like a validation seeking um, thing or, or like trying to perpetuate, trying to keep like the good times rolling, you know, yeah. when they're, when they're so good at, because maybe you don't have that in, in other areas. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, I did that for for such a long time, and um, so so socially, so I did have I did have you know the ability to believe in myself, but I I've put together over the years that I I just think that dwarfism is such a confusing thing, and my confidence kind of led to it didn't lead to to in my view anyway people saying oh wow he's such a like strong individual it's like oh he's kind of very alienated like he's kind of in his he he's so strong in himself that he just is on his own so much and that's what has been you know my years after after college has been like really kind of more in a in a in a loner type situation which i think is why I ended up playing the drums and I'm addicted to surfing and I've loved photography as well. You know, they're all kind of like solo sports per se. And, um, I can do them whenever I want. I've also, the other problem is, is like, I've just had so many incredible experiences by myself, um, <clears throat> that I felt like I didn't really have to deal with the, the, the self-denial or the self-confidence issues when it comes to socialization and um you know they're they're kind of pacifiers i guess in a sense you know if you have such a great time doing the same thing that you've always done why 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 change it but eventually you know like you said you got married and and have kids like that's it it doesn't always work for 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 being in a in a different tribe or in a different group of people i don't know does that make sense it does uh, it does you know it's let me think for a second before I spit this question out. Yeah. I, th I think it's just an, it's an interesting topic because on the one hand, so many of us experience our own version of this is the vessel I was born into. I wish it was different. Why can't it be different? And then some people choose to make that everything about them. Mm -hmm. Some people choose to say, this is just who I am. I can't help it. I often think of the analogy like with myself, with my own insecurities throughout the years, I've always thought like, what would it be like or what could life look like if I was like um, 1995 Brad Pitt and I just like woke up one day and I was in my body and my situation, how would my confidence look? How would I see the world differently? Would I still be able to rise to the top? Like, and, and I try to like play that game in my head of how much of it is just in your own head, how much of it is how people look at you, how much of it is the projection you put out is directing how people look at you. And then it brings up the whole topic of the whole crisis in the world right now. People are obsessed with like identity and how I look and how you look and blah, blah, blah. And it's in, I have, I have my own thoughts and opinions about it, but I'm wondering how that is for you living your experience in life where you have your own characteristics and traits that aren't changeable. And now we're living in this world where some people are making it like literally everything, the most important thing. And then yeah. some people like I grew up in a more of a time and you're a similar age to me. So it's we grew up in a time where it's more about like, all right, you're short. Who, who gives a fuck? You know, like who cares? Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, let's make fun of each other. Let's just be real, whatever. And now it's yeah. more like, no, everything is about that. And I'm wondering where you lie. Have, have your your thoughts evolved on that? How do you personally live in that in that paradigm? Yeah, there, there are a lot. I've, there's a lot in there, right? Um, so addressing the, the 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 last part that you that you mentioned, I think um, like with joking around and with with like having that sort of rapport, I think that what I what I learned, I I've been to a number of um, I've been in a, a couple of situations where I've been at comedy clubs and the um, the comic will come out and do like. 10 minutes or 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 they're almost their entire set will be midget jokes and it's just about like how dumb midgets look and how short they are and how crazy it must be to be a midget and like all these you know just midget is the wrong term don't please don't go out saying the word midget but like this is what they're saying from right. the stage and you know when it happened i was thinking why um like why is this okay like what and why is this funny i don't understand why people weren't really laughing, but I'm thinking like, oh, why is this, why is this such a funny thing? And it, it dawned on me that, you know, you can make fun of, um, there, there are way, there are funny jokes that can be made about, you know, Asian people and black people and white people and women and, and men and all these, you know, different situations. 
But a lot of times when those jokes are funny, they're about someone who is a hero or someone who has like this elevated status or some sort of achievement or something like that. I mean, when they're funny, they're still made and not funny, I think, in in other situations. But for me, when I... I don't see any little people as being heroes and, or at least being seen, they're heroes in my eyes, but I don't see society as saying like, oh yeah, there's a little person that's, we love them because of, because they've done this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And we also know them well enough to be able to make jokes that aren't punching down, but actually, you know, are at, at our jabs because we do love them. So, and I think when you have a friendship that, um, where you you have the funniest jokes it's when you love someone that right. that much you know or you 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 keep them in in high enough regard and i don't see that for us and that's that's one reason why i think the jokes always are terrible and fall flat i do so many dumb things that don't <laughs> that don't revolve around or uh, are a condition of my dwarfism like I, I mean ask any of my close friends like i just <laughs> do some really really dumb shit and I like that's the stuff that I think is funny, you know, but they know me and they know my mannerisms and the stuff that I would say and that I would be the last person at a party every single time, you know, for whatever, for whatever reason. And they'll, they'll, and so I, I think that's, you know, when it comes to joking around and when it comes to, to that type of thing, I think little people are probably the most confusing disability that's out there. I will arguably, I would, I would say. Um, a lot of times I think when you see someone who has a limb difference, um, or is an amputee or a wheelchair user, maybe someone was in a car accident or something like that, their average height, I think even for me, I can see that as a more common situation and say, oh yeah, like this person lived a part of their life or lives their life as an average height individual you know, if they were standing up, maybe they would be, you know, five foot six, six feet tall, whatever they are. Um, and as a result of an incident, they are now disabled for little people. Like I'm four foot four and I'm a man, you know what I mean? Like I'm, there are children th that are taller than me. And I think that's a confusing thing to wrap your head around in society is because we are obsessed with, you know, the perfection that you, that you mentioned and, and, um, but it wasn't, I, my eyes don't see, <clears throat> yes, my eyes are at, you know, the level of four foot four, but I see society, I see um, women that I would be interested in dating in just like anyone else sees them. And so it's, it's not like I have a filter that says like dwarfism. It's so the, the ableism that I've imposed upon myself and that I've seen society impose upon me has, has come through, you know, those eyes. So I think just getting, just getting dropped in, I guess, as, as kind of referring back to, you know, if, if you were just dropped in as, as Brad Pitt and, and being in that situation, I think if you're just dropped in, it would kind of be a shocking ex experience to say, Oh yeah, as a little person, why am I being treated differently? Why, why are people, putting such a um a weight on height and having that be such an important thing in society when you grow up with it you can kind of see the steps i guess and um and you you evolve into or you grow into that experience it's an interesting topic because what I'm thinking about is, is all these things are so relative. Like, for instance, I got an email this morning, Absolutely. an email update from my friend Sean mm -hmm. in, in Hawaii. His wife is has stage four cancer and she's in the hospital right now. And I'm, I'm pretty sure if I asked her, hey, if you could come back tomorrow as a, as a little person that's really healthy, would you be into that? I'm pretty sure she'd say yes. You know, so and, and so it's it, all these like um, like these hierarchies of suffering are so relative, you know, like you take you take a. a Someone, someone with five hundred billion dollars that's eighty five years old and said, "Hey, would you rather be homeless and twenty years old?" There's a good chance they'd say yes, you know, most likely. So it's 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 almost like um, there's the acknowledgement of the vessel we were born in, the situation we were born in, and then there's I guess the choice of how do we choose to identify or how do we choose to proceed from that point forward. You know, we were, we were, we all have, um, physical, mental, financial, emotional situations 
that mm-hmm. some we have control of, some we don't. Although, interestingly enough, I was listening to this podcast this morning and they were saying within a certain amount of decades from now, we'll likely be able to change our genetics to the point where we can potentially grow taller, change all these different characteristics about ourselves. And yep. my, you know, my first, you know, vulnerable reaction is like, I can't wait. I would love to like change some things about myself, which is, it's really fucked up to admit that, but, it, and I wish it wasn't so I wish I was had more, I wish I had the confidence to say I'm perfect the way I am, but I feel like a, a lot of people would be like, you know what? Yeah, I'll take the magic pill. Um, but until that moment, I feel you like also, there, uh, I was just going to say, you also lived your life for decades without that ever being an option. And now at this age, now you're hearing that this could potentially be an option yeah yeah which i think is a totally different me- mental state than if you were five years old and realized that you could change things yes yes it's just these these are interesting topics to me because i feel like they parallel a lot of what's going on in the world right now where there's there's talk about people victimize self-victimizing themselves and there's people that are obsessed with identity and there's people that that hate that and there's people that love that and there's so many of these various when it comes down to i think strategies on how to live life do you find that as well do you find there's like a, a different relatability to to let's say uh world you know uh, world situations identity politics all these things living as a little person do you find that you see those things differently because you can't change your height yet and all these other um things maybe um aren't as big of a deal as people make them out to be i i think i'm um I feel like maybe being a little person, I'm more sensitive to those um, identity, you know, I guess uh, situations. I don't necessarily know the the proper term um, to to qualify them, but um, I think so because I think it's a similar struggle that I've I've had. You know, it's <clears throat> for the longest time I just and and it's kind of a, a, a common theme among the 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 folks that I've interviewed on my podcast is. You know, they would tell me, oh, yeah, I grew up and my parents told me I could do anything I wanted. And I was like, that's great. But also you can't. Is is that a denial of, you know, what you actually are? Like, is is that because I felt I feel like now that I, you know, intellectualize it, I guess. And I think back, I'm like, if I just kind of shut myself into this person that could believe I could do whatever I, I anything, you know that's not, that's not the case. Like I never made it on the basketball team. I never, um, and you know, I, I was not so desirable as like a, a, someone to date in. And I was like, it actually like back dating, like backfired on me like early on because there was, there were, uh, girls in school that were interested in me. And I was like, so, Um, I, my confidence was so low that I just blew them off, you know, in like a a mean way, which was so terrible and awful, like as a 13 year old, you know, what was in your mindset during that? You were thinking, were you thinking, um, they were interested in you in the wrong reason or they couldn't possibly be interested in you? What was your mindset? Like couldn't possibly be interested. Yeah. They didn't know what they were getting themselves into. And I didn't, that was, that was honestly a need. I, it's not like I had thought that out and I had just been like, oh yeah, like you there are all these 10 things about me that you need to know that you will never understand. It was mm-hmm. just like, that was just a knee jerk reaction. And I was yeah. like, you don't know what you're talking about. See ya. You know, what's funny. Like, you know, what's funny. Not funny is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm shorter than average. However, I obviously am not a little person and yet I've had the same exact feelings when, when really? Yeah. A hundred, a million percent. I mean, um, I've had, yeah, plenty of situations in my life where, um, I've self-sabotaged relationships. Cause I'm like, you don't realize I'm an artist. I'm like, I have a fucked up light, uh, past in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, you don't know what you're like. Why would you possibly like me? Like anyone that could be interested in me has a really horrible taste. And I don't want to be with someone that doesn't have a cope with reality uh, <laughs> the way you do. Let, let me save you from me. Yeah. This like what on anyone you. that would hang out with me is just you're, you're fucked up, you know? <laughs> so, right. It's, yeah. I, I've I've kind of used the 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 phrase like. I wouldn't ever want to date someone who would want to date me. Right. There's like you a know? famous quote of something like, I, I don't want to be a member of anyone, any club that would have me. I forgot who the exactly. quote, quote is from, but that's, there's, uh, there's certainly truth to that. And I don't think it's because you're a little person. I think it's just a human reaction to someone that's not, you know, quote unquote, perfect. I think very few of us are perfect. I, there was like some TikTok I was scrolling through and they were saying how um, 
sadly for us, like the majority of women want someone that's like six foot three and like has this financial thing and this other thing. And it's like, and those, yep. those dudes, I, I find myself so I'm like, fuck, you guys must have had such a different life than me. <laughs> like, <they're, laughs> Yeah, but, for sure. Maybe had a lot more fun in college yeah. than I did. Um, yeah, totally. I, I, you know, I, I come up against that even, even now in my forties when I'm, you know, going on dates and meeting people and stuff like that. And, and some folks are like, I don't understand why anyone would care. Why, who, who cares? And then the majority of, of, of women that I meet, they're like, you're very nice. Sorry. It's not for me, you know? Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's just kind of, but, but that is, that's the, that's the societal thing. I think that's just, that's just out there. And, but that does something to you. I mean, as, as, as once you receive that information as someone like maybe yourself and, and, and me, like there, there's a, um, there's an element of, you know, questioning your identity or your, your own validation in this, in this world. And among uh, the, the folks that you might try to, uh, drop yourself into or introduce yourself to or, or mm. just try to you know be friends with it's it's it it's kind of confounding sometimes isn't it it kind of begs the question though doesn't everyone have a version of that in other words like you know you said earlier um you know you, you'll look at at women and, and be attracted or not and it doesn't you know just because you have this form that you're looking out from it doesn't change who you find attractive but in the same note it also there's a group of women that you don't find attractive that for them, it's like, man, I was born uh, too fat or I'm not as attractive as uh, Susie over there or whatever. It's like, except there's like maybe 1% or 2% or maybe 10% of people that are that everyone just, oh, look at her, look at him. And yeah. then the rest of us are like, something not, part, not something's not perfect about us and, and it, yeah. it affects us and it makes, and uh, it, it speaks uh, volumes on seeing the humanity in people. But then also, I think we also, all of us have to acknowledge that uh, we're attracted to whoever we're attracted to. And it's like, and if someone's not attracted to us, number one, it's it's a bummer, right? But on the, on the other hand, it's also like, well, you know, I don't want to be with someone that's not attracted to me. So it just kind of slims down your, uh, your, your field of vision, I guess, for, for how people uh, see you and how we see others. So it's just part of the game, I suppose. We have to make the best out of it. Yeah, especially these days with I think, you know, um the 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 quick validation and the quick like rejection of of folks like on social media and dating apps and and other things like that. I think we've we've really moved away from which is a whole another topic, yeah. but yeah. You're yeah. talking about like uh, little people not being heroes. Is is Peter Dinklage like the first one that kind of is kind of gives gives off the like chutzpah and the balls of like being a hero cuz like that scene in uh in Elf, he was so freaking alpha. And I think that he is, in my opinion, a great example of how you could just grab life by the balls and be like, so fucking what? I'm this size. Like, you know, and he, he had such a, such confidence in everything else. You could see him. I could see him as someone that you look at like, that's, that's the way you do it. Like the way this guy does it. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. And I think, you know, he, um, I'm I'm a I'm a huge fan. I'm he's an inspiration. I th I think he's he's a total badass. Um I've gotten to work with him on a show um and and he was incredible on the show. Um yeah, I th I think that, I mean he did a movie called um uh The Station Agent, which was one of the it was the first time I ever saw someone that looked like me on on screen and without even like having those words in my head like he instantly became a hero because he was li depicting a life of dwarfism where it's super sad and isolated and all the awkward uh relationships and s false starts and um you know passion as well there's there's a lot of passion in that movie in that film um and and ever since then, you know, I, and learning about him over the years, like, he, he is absolutely a hero because he um, not only is an incredible actor, but he he turned down all of the stuff that just would have marginalized his, uh, you know, his, his talent. And, and he ate hot dogs and slept on couches and worked data entry for 
a really long time and just to stay in New York and and find the projects that worked for him. And and yes, absolutely. I don't think he's in my opinion, he's not well enough known to be a ubiquitous like hero around I think he's pretty damn close. I think he's 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 very, very close to being known. Um but you know I I I, I think yeah, he's 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 doing he's he's doing the work for for us for sure. Maybe I'm I'm just being naive, but to me, I don't see like a separator between like here's like the little people heroes and here's the normal hype heroes. I just think there's certain people that are do heroic things, and I the way I view things, maybe I'm weird. I don't I don't really care. Um, I just feel like if someone does something heroic, they're you know they're they're heroic. The end. Um, yeah, absolutely. Do you? I think the amplification of their their message though is what's kind of lost. You know what I mean? I think that's that's really because I, I mean I have friends that are um metal winners from the the um uh the paralympics and i think they're absolutely they're all they're all heroes and i i mean a hero is 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 a very subjective uh, sure. qualifier too like i think you know my my the my friends that i've i've interviewed on the on the podcast i i think are heroes i just think the amplification of their voice is so minimal that it doesn't uh it, it's 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 not really been available for people to believe in and and hear these stories to to make them you know someone in in you know other people's view as as, as a hero. Since we're both surfers, I, I want to ask you um, a little bit about that. I've I am someone that I've been skateboarding since I was a little kid. I've been surfing since I was a teenager. I'm not yeah. great. I'm not great at either. To be perfectly bluntly honest, I, I love them all. I love snowboarding. I love all of them. I'm not great. I'm average. Um, that being said, I think there's something to be said about being a board sport person, especially something like surfing, because it's almost comical that anyone learning how to surf has to do it in, in the view of everyone. You're going to wipe out. You're going to suck. You're going to be terrible for it. At least several years of being yes. being front and center, literally where the entire beach can see you. There's a level of humility there. There's a level of like earning your stripes. I'm wondering how that experience has helped you in the same way of, you know, learn, learning to surf. And even once you know how to surf, being a surfer and you're doing it in front of everyone, you're, you're getting your ass kicked by the waves. Everyone's watching. How, how has that uh, served the rest of your life? And as far as those sorts of lessons of failing publicly, I, that's, that's such a great question. It's, um, I, I, I think my love for it just overcomes any sort of, um, desire for humility. I don't know. Like it's, it's, I just, um, maybe also, you know, I see a lot of other people that are falling on their face and I'm like, okay, cool. Like we're all, we're all, the ocean is in control. You know, yeah. none of us have any sort of say, um, I, I guess I just learned over the years that if I really love something, I'm gonna. Well, I mean, I guess yeah. It's 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 just a, 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 a maybe it's maybe it's a strength of mine. I guess I don't know. I, I really, if I love something, I'm really gonna go for it, and I'm gonna just you know, um, mess up until I until I figure it out. And um, yeah, you're right. Like sir, everybody's watching me carry my surfboard from the parking lot to the water, and um, I've definitely got comments and I've definitely, definitely, you know, have received some cat calls, uh, on my way down, but, um, I did make some really incredible friends in the water. And I used to say that surfing changed my life. And now I say that surfing continues to change my life because it, it just really does. And, um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just a fool for it. You know, I just, I, I love it so much. And, and it just brings me so much joy to be in the water. And if I get to surf with friends too, I mean, that's, that's such a lovely experience, you know, it's so much fun. So, and we're all, we're all kooking out, you know, we're all <laughs> yes, dumb in the water. It's, it's great. I, I, I just, I love that. I, it's, it's always, it's always been just so much fun, fun for me. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's something to be um, celebrated about being 
in nature to that extent. You're you're putting yourself in jeopardy in more than one way, and but then you're also you're more present than any at any other time. And and yeah. especially like at, at like you know dawn sessions or um you know mm-hmm. sunset sessions when it's like you're looking around, the birds are flying overhead, and the light is perfect. It, there's something about just being in that exact moment where you think about how many others are like locked in their in their room playing Nintendo or staring at Netflix or something and you're like out in nature and uh you're doing it publicly but it's also like that none of that ex- everything else fades away and i feel like there's a lot of when i'm painting or when i'm surfing or doing any of those types of things that put you in the zone those are some of the best experiences and some of the biggest lessons i learn and some of the the most powerful observations of life are observed and taken in at those times do you, do you find the yep. same thing whether it's drumming or surfing it's being in the zone 100%. is magical yes yes 100 percent. i i think having that like i guess maybe it's described as the flow state yes. um where you're just kind of in the zone and you're you know you're out there surfing and uh, you know it, i guess it can kind of come and go if you're if you're out there with friends and it's maybe more of a mellow day or something mm-hmm. like that um but yeah, yeah i just love that and one thing I, that I thought of when you when uh, when while you were talking is, I think for me I've created this really tough, thick skin, right? To to deal with the the avoidance and the the snickering and people taking photos of me just at the grocery store and stuff like that. And one thing I realized is, you know. It didn't. It, it was. It was there in junior high when the girl came up to me and said, "Oh, I like you," and I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't care." You know what I mean? Like that was a thick skin presenting itself. I feel like surfing um, has taught me to kind of uh, drop that thick skin a little bit and lean into maybe a bit more of a softer side. And if if I if I make a mistake or I um, don't look as cool as i hoped on a wave or in the water i'm i'm a person you know what i mean and yeah. i think like embracing that having the the idea to to embrace that more recently in in life i think has has served me it's 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 been kind of a theme that i'm trying to to put out there in relationships as well because that that thick skin has um really shown up a lot and that doesn't work when it comes to, to, to meeting people and, um, holding folks to like a regard that you, that is unattainable, you know, and, and, and stuff like that, like that, that girl in junior high, what, what, what possibly would she have had to do in order to get my attention and have me be soft? So I, I'm trying to show up a little bit more, you know, as, as like soft, vulnerable, you know, um, you know, and if, if, if I get hurt, then that's a part of, that's a part of life, you know? Yeah. Mm. You know, it's, it's, I, I play that game again. Like what, what if, uh, you woke up tomorrow and like you were, your body was being controlled by like the rock, like his charisma and everything. Do you ever, I mean, it just, it does, it begs, it begs the question of like, what could your mindset be like if you didn't have if all of us collectively didn't have the baggage and all the uh biases the self-imposed shit that we carry around with us you know i i I did an episode like this on on my podcast i i asked 15 of my guests what would your life be like if you didn't have dwarfism and i love the i I did a bunch of these um kind of a short answer question or i just posed the same question to 15 people Mm. and I loved the responses because some people would be like, well, I'd be a basketball player or I would, you know, date whoever I wanted to. And then there were a handful of folks that were like, I can't answer that question. That's an impossible question. How can I, how could I'm, I'm me. I only know me for me. Like I've been through all my surgeries. I've been through all of my sad times, my happy times, my hardships, my successes. I, I don't, I don't know. I have no, I have no, like, I'd probably just wake up and have the same thing for breakfast and right. go out and drive right. my same car and do the same thing that I always knew. I don't know. Right. It's, it's, um, it, I, I think it's such an interesting conversation. Um, but I, I, it reminded me that I, I love the, the way that, you know, hearing other people respond to that too is, is such a interesting thing because it's, it is kind it, it's taking, 
it, it's like a, a melding of like what you've learned and all of the things that you've experienced in your life and trying to superimpose it on something that you like, do you think it's superior to have the rocks body and charisma? I don't, like, I don't know. Like, is like, I've worked on this for 44 years. So like, this is like, this has come up as, as it is. And he's, you know, worked on his, on, on him. I, so I, I don't know. It's such an interesting topic. It's, it's, I want to get off the topics. I don't want to get, I don't want to be, I don't want to bump, (laughs) bump bump people out too much, but yeah, I mean, I definitely relate to all of it. I could, I could go on for hours about my own insecurities and bullshit. We all have it. Um, Philosophy podcast and just riff. (laughs) Have you ever read, uh, the book, the four questions by Byron Katie or, uh, yeah, I think it's called that something, something with the four questions, What the hell is that book called love? Oh, there you go. Loving what is by Byron Katie. It's, a, it's uh, a life-changing book, and the reason I bring it up, well, first of all, everyone listening should, should I would say, listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is a million times power, more powerful than the, than the written book, and it was one of those books that was life-changing, and um, it's also very simple. She puts all of your life's problems through a filter of four questions, and the, the questions ultimately funnel down to whether these problems that are in your head or in your and even even real problems are they real are they true and even if they are it basically comes down to who who would you be without them so if you it's like kind of like what you said if you if you did not have these problems these situations who who would you be who could you be if you didn't have them not not if you physically didn't have them not if you really didn't live them but if if that if the lingering remnants of these situations were not attached to you who could you be and it and it, it's kind of an enlightening uh philosophy and i definitely encourage you and everyone to read it but um so much of these when, things when you read it, yeah go ahead what, what did you get what did you get for like what was your takeaway from yeah I so kind of- what I, I don't want to give away the book but the audiobook is incredible because there's a lot of excerpts from live seminars that she had and um some of the people at the seminar had the most atrociously horrific life situations you could imagine like just imagine in your head what would be the worst thing that could happen and there was things that were like twice as bad and she goes through her process of these four questions with these people and at the beginning of each one you're like you're like there's no fucking way this person's gonna ever get better they're 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 cursed it's horrible what happened to them and by the end of it you know the people and and me you're in tears because you realize that there, there is, there may be nothing you could do about certain situations, but there is something you could do about your mindset, how you view your, your life. And by just reframing things can change mm-hmm. everything. And I feel like for me, it's, it's broken down to four questions. So when I find myself in um, a predicament of some sort, I try to run these four questions th- or run my situation through these four questions. And by the end of it, I'm like, okay, got it. Here, here's what I can change. Here's what I can't. Here's how I would act if that problem didn't exist. Um, so for me, it was it was life changing. I'd like to read. I just looked it up. I'd I'd love to check the book out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, talk about drumming to me. Uh, I I'm someone that loves playing music, and again, uh, I'm very average as as a musician. I've been playing guitar for decades, and I'm still like just average, maybe maybe slightly above average at best. And then over the past year, I I, I uh, having a midlife crisis in the form of uh, I, I took up bass and drums. My, my twin boys uh, took up drum lessons, which was a great excuse to buy a drum kit. And I'm like, yep. I'm like, dude, I'm going to learn how to play drums, too. <laughs> so I've been learning that, that and piano all at the same time. It's my midlife crisis. I'm, I'm proud of it. And uh, it's so uh, I just love creativity in every form because I find they all interact with each other. And I love the idea in general, in my life, I love the idea of being able to speak as many languages as you can, as you can fluently. I'm, I'm also trying to get my Spanish improved, but I love the idea of being able to communicate in various ways, musically, linguistically, um, artistically, uh, at a point where, where it's just fluid, like we can just talk. I don't have to think about which verb am I putting after this adjective or whatever. And um, speak to me about your, your how you look at drums or how you look at music and what it's done for you and how maybe just give me the give me the idea of what's going through your head as you're playing yeah um i i love i've loved music forever um yeah i bought my drum kit when i was 14 or 15 years old and i basically bought it because my hands are smaller and i 
that was the only instrument that was in a rock band that um, I felt like I could easily hold, you know? Um, and, and it was tough to to get a drum set home and set it up for, for my size because um, I needed to sit lower so my legs would reach the pedals. I just felt like it was such a it was a it was a great uh outlet for me i think everybody you know, a lot of people say like oh it's you know you can take out your anger and your aggression with drums which is a thing i guess but the more beneficial thing for for drumming is it's it's music it's musicality it's learning how to take your exercises and your you know your your um, rudiments and turn them into musical things and those were the like the little successes that I, I learned about myself like I I can figure things out I can even if I have to slow things down which is every single thing that you have to learn you know it was a great tool that I applied that I could apply to the rest of my life and I could say okay if I want to learn this I have to approach it you know as an as a person who's new you know, and just approach it as as someone who you're going to make mistakes, you're going to fall on your face, you're going to to do this. But it was such a confidence builder to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to play this beat. I can't get it as quickly as I can, so I have to slow it down. Um, and then you you will if you if you do it enough and and you slow it down enough, you will get it. And that's and getting it is is why why I think it's it's important to play music is is allowing yourself to just cuz you can just kind of like throw a bunch of stuff around and make a bunch of noise but once you get it then you're you're hungry for the next to get the next thing and then to add the next thing and to play with another person and then play with more people and um it 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 was it was just a huge confidence builder and and I it, it it drumming has taught me so much about um how to play alone how to how to just be someone who can sit down at a drum kit and play for an hour on whatever I wanted to play and not necessarily exercises but music um musical things and then how to be a uh, a leader in in a band you know how to like set a tempo and commit to that tempo and commit to the song and, and what we're doing. And then also to be a collaborator. That's the most important thing, right? It's like if the tempo, if, if I set the wrong tempo and we're playing and you know, the, the singer's like, this is too fast or this is too slow. You want to make it sound good. So uh, adjusting and collaborating and listening and not playing so loud that you, that other, other members can't hear. So I, that's they're all incredible lessons but that that is the you know the best lesson i think i learned is is how to collaborate and that i love to collaborate and that i i love to to bring other other people's ideas along with my own and um and and have them work to to be something fun and creative do you ever do what i do in the sense that I personify myself in different ways as I'm creating. Like there's this, there's the, the J mm-hmm. that's behind the easel that's painting, that's listening to uh, Miles Davis or Zeppelin or something. And then I'm in the, in the, in the zone, nothing else exists. Then there's a side of me that's like out in the social media front doing reels and all the stuff that I don't necessarily love. Then there's a side of me that's doing art shows, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, for a drummer, for a musician, obviously it's the same thing. There's a side of you that's maybe locked in your studio creating something, you're channeling something. Then there's the side of you that you've alluded to, like touring around the United States, touring around Europe, being front and, you know, well, not, maybe not front and center, but front and back with the drummer situation. Um, there's different roles that a musician or an artist plays do you find that those are all the same, Christoph, or is there a side of you that's maybe more boisterous and out there, and there's a side that just like leave me alone? I just want to create. How do you reconcile all the different sides of an of a creative person? Oh man, that's um, I I I do think they are all sides, all different sides, but I do think they also come from the same root. And so maybe, oh man, how do I describe this? I I don't know that I've been asked this question. This is a lovely question. Um, 
I think. I think it. I, yeah. I, I guess maybe if you imagine the roots of a tree, and and some are, you know, Kristoff is kind of at the at the the base of the the tree. Um. I, I I guess like some some personas are a little bit farther away, or they they are they are a little bit more. Um. You know, tapping into their own thing, or or have to maybe play a certain role depending on what um depending on like what that um what that artistry or what that you know creativity is i guess um yeah i i i i definitely had to do that for the podcast you know that was but but i also think like the more you you the more i would do those things the more they kind of settled back down to to being you know at the roots and and um i go to an acting studio class every every week and i mean maybe this is a great the, the best example of it but if if i if i show up so close to my my christoph root you know um that's not me really taking the risk to be an, an actor playing a role and so maybe that's the time when i'm when i really need to step out of of the 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 christoph route and just kind of explore what else is is out there but i guess there is the persona that is actually you know allowing that exploration right the persona of christoph that is allowing that exploration and that i feel has always been there that's been there with drumming that's been there with uh, you know going back to just riding my bike in the woods i just you know if i see another path that i've not taken in a long time i'll just be like oh whatever it's another 10 or 15 minutes that i'm not gonna i'll be you know i won't be home you know for another 10 or 15 minutes and i'll just go explore this other thing so that's that's still kind of always been there um man i don't know if i'm answering your question at all but i think like um yeah i guess it's it's maybe i'm seeing it as as stepping out of your comfort zone and meeting a moment let me Does let me make... like, yeah no i mean you're definitely hitting on what i'm what i'm interested in. I'm, I'm fascinated in this topic and i don't even know why but i feel like a lot of my life as an artist and, and see if this hits you in any way that you can comment on maybe maybe i'm just going off on a riff here i feel like so much of my life has been searching for meaning and trying to figure out why i was blessed or cursed with this artistic things i, I kind of sucked at team sports i was very socially awkward i didn't know how to interact properly as a, as a kid um grew up with a bipolar mom a lot of turmoil and so for me, being an artist was the was my superpower in a way. And I kind so, of feel like my whole life has been almost like uh, imagining myself being thrown the keys of, her, of a Ferrari and, and thinking, like, let's see what I could do with this baby. And I feel like my life, a lot of my artistic related life, at least, has been, let's let's see what I can do. I've been given this set of circumstances, these talents, these passions or a lack of others maybe was all more it in some cases. And the idea of let's see why I was given this. Let's, let's live this to the fullest. And, and I think as I've done that, I've realized that it allows me to express very different sides of myself. Like very, I'm very, very, very right brained creatively, but I'm also equally left brained and love the marketing business side of things, which I've been told is unusual, but it seems very normal to me. Does any of that hit with in 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 with anything with you? Yeah, absolutely. Because I I I feel like I'm very creative and I I love to just kind of get lost in some creativity and and you know I'll sit and write for two hours and just see what see what comes out. And then also at the same time I I do love the business side of it. I love to negotiate. I love to talk to po folks about um, how to, to, to come together on, on a project. Um, I think with, so, and also side note, like sometimes with the creativity, I just feel like 
um, like uh, crippling procrastination because I'm like, oh God, I, I don't know that I should be doing any of this at all. This this doesn't. Is this actually me? I don't know. <laughs> how, Imposter how syndrome. I, yeah. yeah. Um. I, but I, I, you know, when you were saying that, I, I, it, it really just kind of made me think of like replace like the replacement body um you know with the rock again it's like this is your journey this is my journey this is this is what we've gone on and as this is why i think it's why i think our 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 bodies and our minds are so valuable to us i think mm -hmm. that's why um i couldn't like change but i i it, given the opportunity if if I had a debilitating disease or something like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come back with something else. Like I I I lived my life um, as I've as I have, and it's been as I wanted to, and and I th I think that that's like for all the mistakes and for all the anxiety and for all the um, self denial and for all the confusion and for everything that I've done, like that's been. That's that's kind of art in a sense. I I, I once saw Wynton Marsalis play in Detroit, and he made the comment like, from the stage. I mean, he put the, they were just all incredible badasses that were playing. Um, you know, his bands are amazing, and I remember that he said, you know, we're playing. He he wasn't the way he said it was so much uh, uh, less self self indulgent than what I'm what I'm recounting. But you know, he said. You know, we're playing really incredible music up here, but the real art is living life. And it was, that was like, I was in a, a period of my life where I was like, it's got to be perfect. This has to be perfect. I have to make the right steps. I have to do this thing and that thing. And I was like 20, you know, yeah. nobody knows what they're doing. At, well, most people don't know what they're doing at 20. I didn't know what Especially I was doing. Especially guys. At, <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Right, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing at like 40, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Um. But I've lived, but I think there there's a there's a truth to saying that the life I've lived, however creative or not, is art. I think that that's I think that's art in itself, and mm. I think I'm 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 proud of that for for whatever it is. You know what I mean? Whatever whatever I've shown up to do, however I've if I've ever left a mark or, or haven't at all, that's I don't know that that's the point. For me, anyway, you know, I think just going through and figuring this body and mind out enough for me to like eat food, survive, and have relationships and have fun, you know, that's that that's what I I believe in. I think I, I love that you said that because it leads into a question that I was going to ask you, but I'll, I'll preface it by saying I, I feel the same thing. It took me a very long time into yeah. you know into my mid 20s let's say until i realized that you have the option to look at life as a blank canvas you have the option to be happy you have the option to create scenarios within your given circumstance and if you want to have a better financial situation or a better physique or you want to be well traveled or you want to have these skills you actually yep. can design your life and look at how you want your life to be and reverse engineer it and say, okay, how do I get to that point? And mm -hmm. that prefaces a question I was going to ask you. Do you, uh, how is your spiritual life? How does that play into this? Like for me, I think that I've grown, I, I feel like I'm pretty spiritual. And I also, I, when I look at some of the bigger points of my life and my career, I can pinpoint it to almost like a law of attraction thing where I would envision but more so really fully believe that such and such could happen. And I've manifested some insane things. I'm wondering if that hits you as complete woo woo, or if there's a version of that for you that you follow. Spirituality is, is not, um, I, I think it's, it's very important. And I hope, I hope that I'm spiritual. I don't I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, I'm not really religious. I know those are two different things, but I, I like to think of myself as spiritual. I, I like to think that, you know, I I don't really talk like the universe is providing or it's it's telling me something or something like that. I that's not necessarily how I 
approach the spiritualism i i think um for me it works that just uh i i i i don't know how to to qualify it with with like a saying or words but like i guess things kind of come and they and they go and we're here for a time and um i i just want to be grateful and and um I hope I'm grateful. I know I know there are times when I am probably not grateful and I'm, you know, uh <clears throat> probably pushing spirituality away. Um but I yeah, I I like to I like to I like to uh have some knowledge of that and 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 try to and maybe I'm downplaying it more than 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 I actually like believe, but I Yes, one hundred percent. I I believe in spirituality. I don't necessarily know how to qualify it, um, but I, I I believe that's an important way for me to to show up. Uh, let me ask you this, and we'll we'll wrap up soon because I know you have other appointments going on. But what direction do you see yourself going in the various things you have going on? Like we we talked about earlier, we've been talking about all along how you're kind of kind of like me with like many spokes coming out of the central. Um, identity of who you are, like your drummer and actor and blah, 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 all these different things that you have true interest and passion in. Do you, I sort of look at each of the things, the, all the spokes in my wheel as things that I'm trying to progress steadily on, on each of them all, all at the same time. And I'm wondering which direction you see yourself pushing more dominantly towards, whether it's career wise or just for self growth. And I'm maybe related to that question, pick and choose whichever of these you want to touch upon. Where is your mind more dominantly now? Which what topics are, are you like a life learner that you're just focused on obsessing over? What are your current obsessions? Are you obsessing over learning something? Are you focused on certain things? We each have our own three, four, five things that are are dominant in our algorithm of social media. Where you flip through, you're like, yeah, I want to learn more about that, and I love this. And what are those things for you? For me, I I really want to learn about writing. I want to learn how to write um my stories i want to learn how to write theatrical stories i want to learn how to tell stories um i want to learn how to tell stories of people with dwarfism and just of people i i that that's that's become my my biggest um mission i guess or or you know my my biggest passion is i i really want to figure that out for myself and it's it's tough. It's it for me. It's it's a difficult thing. It's easy for me to talk about the crazy jobs, the crazy stories, the crazy experiences, what my thoughts are, are in and around those jobs and experiences as a little person. Um, but writing it down for some reason and making it and having it be something that is clear, concise, and under understood is 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 a difficult thing for me i hated reading and writing when i was in school i just i I was never a reader or writer and now that that has flipped a lot and i love to read and i love to Mm -hmm. uh, i love to write as well um personally i have been learning about yoga and pilates because i've learned that the reason why i'm sore and stiff sometimes is my muscles are tight and so you can't see behind me, but there's like a yoga mat and I a bunch of yoga. different foam rollers and balls and stuff that, you know, <laughs> I can get to my muscles and yeah. like roll them out because I don't know if you know this, Jay, but if you roll your muscles out and you go surfing, it feels so much better. Yes. Um. So I just, I just learned this not too long ago and I'm like, oh, I don't have to feel like I'm super tight all the time. I can just lay on the floor and roll some stuff out for 30 minutes. And it's a, it's a life changing experience. I want, you know, I I mentioned my surgeries. I want to be as mobile and pain free for as long as I can. I'm in my mid forties. So let's get on it now. You know, let's, let's make sure that I can move and, and, and do the things as long as I, can and want to you know Mm. i I know that that's that's a difficult thing for people with skeletal dysplasia which is dwarfism um you know and and it's it's just kind of a ticking time bomb in in a sense and so i I really want to i want to live as mobile of a a life as i possibly can christoph man i'm sitting here chuckling as you're saying this because i i think i've gotten to the uh same 
point in my life, which started it, my yoga journey started maybe uh, in my early 30s. And it, so it's been quite a little bit of it's been some time. And uh, over the years, I've collected every sort of uh, neck stretcher, back stretcher. I have like the, cu- the cups, the you know, the suction cup things, whatever you pull the air out, make your back look like crazy. I got we got a uh, infrared sauna. I've got the tens unit. I've got everything that could affect or help your back or your neck. And then I stretch every night while we're watching TV. I'll do every stretch. I do yoga. It's so freaking important no matter what age. But I, I got to the point when I was uh, when I was just dating my wife, she was doing yoga and she's like, oh, you should really come. And I was like, ah, it's for girls. You know, that's stupid. And, uh, <laughs> and then she'd be doing it at home and she'd be like, oh, why don't you try this, you know, this movement or whatever. And I couldn't touch my toes. And uh, I was like, this is freaking pathetic, dude. So uh, ever since then, I became obsessed with um, with yoga and mobility and whatnot. Um, I, I think the last question I want to I want to honor and respect your time. How how is imp- how important is it to you that your accolades, your achievements, your talents, how important is it to you that those are affiliated with being a little person? Because I, I understand that's sort of inescapable, the size and the shape that we're all in. And I understand that on a daily basis, you probably have a reminder of that. So it's not it's not an, an invisible type thing like some people's um, problems. But on the same note, do you, do you want is it always affiliated like do you want to be the best drummer that is a little person the greatest actor that is a little person or can you just do those things and just be a great drummer and just be a great actor how how important is it because i feel like that's very intertwined in a lot of your answers and i understand it but i'm wondering if that's something that is really necessary and important or is, does that even matter or how yeah much? i think it is necessary and important i, I it's it's i it, it's not it's not something that i i am looking for pity from you know or or anything like that but i hear it talked about so little that i want to be talking about it and i want i i want to normalize my speech in it because listen like four years ago if i would have come on your show i don't know that i did an amazing job today but i would have been so much more reserved and and clogged up in my thoughts in and around dwarfism, it's at, like I'm telling you, it's been a very, very long struggle to to get to a point where I'm honoring me, and I do think it's incredible for like not just me, but for my friends who are you know three foot eight or three feet tall or two foot eight, and they're getting around and they're they're physical in the way that in the ways that they can be physical. Mm-hmm. They're professional folks in their lives. I just think it. I think it informs. I'm learning that it informs every aspect of my life you know and it and it really is it's it's not you know i don't i don't necessarily want to be i don't need to be the best the, the superlative of, of anything it, it, attached to dwarfism or not that's that's not necessarily my goal i i would like to be maybe known as as a representative that um i i see the benefits in me speaking about it you know and 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 attaching those things there, there, there is a docu I, I kind of knocked documentaries earlier. Um, there is a documentary that's, uh, a, a 10 minute documentary about my life and surfing and dwarfism. That's been in a number of, uh, film festivals and it's won some awards. And I, I, I'm, I'm proud of that. I, I think I'd say the word dwarfism. I don't know how many times in 10 minutes. And I think it's great for people to, see a surfer and see these beautiful vistas and also hear dwarfism Mm -hmm. dwarfism you know and and hear me talk about this because if you know if it's not me that's one fewer that's one less person that's out there saying the word you know And and i think that that works for all different types of differences in disability and race and and gender and all all of those things so yeah i i I see it more as being something that's more important now than than kind of ever for me. And well, and you know what like I also give myself permission to change. Like this 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 is something that this is where I am right now. If if I decide that it you know it's not working for me or something like that, I I hope I think that I have whatever it takes to to change that down the road because I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still figuring things out. I love I love that answer and um since we have not met in person since this is our first time chatting I I find that um first of all this has been a great conversation so thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. And, thank and, you so and, much. And 
as far as the dwarfism answer goes, I, I totally re- understand that. But I think I, not but, and I, when I hear your story, I guess it's just a human reaction to like, I internalize it and translate it in, to relate to my struggles. And I think everyone has their own way of interpreting how they interact. So when I meet someone, whatever their life situation is, it's nice to have an opportunity to so, sort of correlate how our struggles can relate because I think it's a human, it should be a human um, quality where we try to find oneness and compatibility and, and translate the different obstacles we have in a way that we can understand it. But then on the same note, like had, uh, throughout the conversation, had you not been coming to me as a person with dwarfism, if you were like six foot 10 or whatever it might be, I would still just as much enjoyed your conversation because I feel like someone that can uh, pursue acting and, and drumming and all these different things at a high level, I find that so interesting and fascinating because there's such pressure on humans to have mm-hmm. the typical nine to five existence and commute to work and anyone that can escape that and live an alternate life. I automatically feel a kinship with like we're the ones totally. doing like the we're the ones doing the weird thing for a living. We're the ones that share that struggle of like, can I pay the bills? Does it make sense? Am I crazy? And then and we're also at a similar age where it's like you have comparison of your peer group to like, oh, man, this dude over here that I went to high school with is making like seven hundred thousand dollars a year. Like, shit, I should have done that for a living. And it's like <laughs> those types of things. So there's been a lot of relatability throughout the conversation. And I just, you know, wanted to thank you for all of the vulnerability and honesty throughout this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I, I, this has been a wonderful conversation. I, I know we could just keep talking because I have, yeah, is it, we have, we click like that and we'll probably end up texting each other, Amazon, uh, like, Objects that will help us to stretch muscles. So I, look <laughs> totally, to, I look forward to our text conversation. <laughs> absolutely. So where can people find you? What should they be on the lookout for? Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, Instagram, uh, it's Christoph ZD, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-Z-D. Um, I have a website too, which is, oh, I forgot what it is. Oh, darn. Oh, um, I had it up here anyway. too on my website, com. 